Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Secret Art of Business. Today, my guest is Simone Moreau, and I could not be more happy that you're here because you are definitely in the vein of exactly what I'm talking about with The Secret Art of Business and how people need to really get that left and that right side going. So with that, I would... Um, I could get into what you do, but I would rather have you kind of talk about it because you're, you're better at what you do than what I what I know about you. So <laughs> I do know that you're a marketing professor and coach and consultant for entrepreneurs. So with that, go. <laughs> okay, amazing. Yes, that's exactly. I am a marketing coach for ambitious coaches and consultants who are ready to amplify and elevate their marketing to book out their offers with Hell Yes clients. And I always say that this type of marketing is 50% mindset 50% strategy and 100% fun. So I believe that marketing is fun, easy and simple, and you don't have to burn out or hustle in the overwhelm of developing your business. And that is 100% what I focus on with my clients. I absolutely love that because I find marketing fun too. And I find that to be a little bit of the success that I've had that I've always, I had this marketing background. So it was always a very natural thing for me. Yeah. But um, while people don't have maybe a history of their own marketing. They do have that creativity that I think everybody has that they could be implementing at this at this exact moment. Um, and you're a little bit a part of that with them, you know, kind of tapping into, yes, you too can market your business and have fun doing that. Yeah, 100%. I think this, I actually believe that marketing is like the best part of building your business. And I think that... <laughs> I, I think that people just get really frozen and scared because they look at it as like this huge to-do list. And that's what I love doing with my clients. I And with even my students, I love taking away all the fluff. We get really clear and simple with your marketing. And when you are simple and clear with your marketing, it it allows for you to focus on the things that matter that are focused with your clients and what your clients want. And it, you take you get rid of all the extra stuff. So it takes away the overwhelm. So I'm with you. I think that when you focus on the very simple fundamentals of marketing, you can make it fun and it is fun. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I love that you phrase everything like that because I think um, you could be a wonderful resource for people that are a little bit stuck in that. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get back into the, our, the creative side of our head and, and have fun with this. And the one thing I'm going to mention too, because I work a lot with artists and creative people is that, they tend to be some of the most humble people too. So when you're asking them to market, they're like, oh, I don't know if I can say that. And I'm like, oh, no, you can because you're awesome. It's true. <laughs> and here's how we're going to do it. And I, I think that probably, you see that often probably with entrepreneurs too, where they're like, oh, I can't possibly say that. Even if they have, you know, a plumbing company or something. It's like, yeah, I'm just a plumber. I'm like, no, you're more than not just a plumber. You are you know, exactly. awesome. And here's how we're going to talk about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. And it's, and it makes sense, right? Like our brains are wired to sort of keep us safe and in the cave, right? So sometimes when we are marketing ourselves, it feels like we're putting ourselves in the line of fire because it's something we're not yes. used to doing. It feels so uncomfortable and there's that element of discomfort. But what we want to do is we want to start to train our brain and our nervous system to really see that it is safe. And, you know, that's one of the things that I do in my container with my clients is to really foster safety and really leaning into their strengths. And I do believe that marketing needs to be really focused on the client, but you also want to be amplifying your own strengths as the entrepreneur, because the best kind of marketing is you. Yes. Okay. It's like yes. you coming in and being you, right? Like it's you being your unique self, because that's exactly what people are gravitating towards. So when we can kind of create that safety for yourself, then you're able to show up and start to market yourself in a, a completely different way. And to your point though, I also recommend that people start to like only think about marketing just the way that we're having a conversation right now, right? Like marketing is just having a conversation with another person. So when we focus on that one person, we're able to show up and direct our conversation to that person. It's more meaningful. It's memorable. And that's really all marketing is. So again, we want to streamline that, keep it simple, easy, and doable, and really focus on your best client. 100%. 100%. Um, all right. So you were not born a professor. You were a child. Once. I wasn't. No. 
You were a child once. However, I played a lot of school growing up. I'm not oh, going to lie. I played right, a lot of school. I was always the yeah. teacher, okay? <laughs> that, that is always my question to everybody, you know, is like, I feel that the people that have really, you know, kind of hung on to that creativity into their adulthood did something really kind of cool as a kid. We all did really cool things as a kid. But I want to know, what did yeah. you do um, that was either creative or innovative or really, really fun when you were a child? Oh, so fun. I love this question. I think it's so great. You know what? So I, it's funny that you even say that because, oh my gosh, I used to play all the time. There's always, I mean, we're children. We, we, that's what we naturally do is yes. we play. Uh, definitely was always the teacher um, with my, my, my sisters. I was the oldest child. I don't know. It just came naturally to me. Um, but I was always super creative. I love drawing. I love creating from a really young age. I went into art classes and I had that really just kept folding as I grew up. You know, I just loved art. I got into acrylic painting and I got into drama and I got into all of the arts and just expressing myself in new ways and really pushing that boundary, pushing my own voice in different ways as well. And, um, the other thing that I think that really helped me, um, and that just kind of carried through into the minute I went to university, you know, I felt like university life, you know, you needed to be practical. And I, I always was a lover of the arts, lover of history. Um, and I realized that, wait, you can actually take this love of art, creativity, this, you know, and you can actually capitalize this on business. And I remember I grew up in a really small town. So we just had like sort of the basics in terms of our high school education. But when I went to university, like it opened up because I was able to then create events and do things. And I love that. So I, I was like, people get paid to be in marketing. Like that's exactly what I want to do. I want to design campaigns. I want to motivate people through really like incredible words. And I want to create these exceptional experiences for people through events. And, you know, and I was like, Oh, a hundred percent. This is exactly what I want to do. Um, so that's kind of how, what led me into the role of getting into marketing. And I feel like that creativity is something that really serves me well. It serves me well because I am an idea generator. I love ideas. I love coming up with new ideas. It's like my favorite thing. You know, someone's like, let's do something new. I'm like, okay, let's do something new. Like I've got five ideas already. Yeah. Let's think about it. All right. Let's, let's, let's dig into this. Yeah. You, oh, then you are a true yeah. visionary by definition, which I think are the most exciting people because they are always coming and they're a little bit of a, you know, a tiger you have to kind of chase, but, um, and control, but I, I love having, uh, the people who are also the ones that keep checking me too, because my ideas will just yeah. go wild until someone says, wait yeah. a second, you know, that's not even physically possible, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I, I love, like, I'm like the jump. <laughs> I love it. I'm like, jump in two feet first. We'll figure it out as we go. Exactly. Kind of I'm like, exactly. let's do this. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So you are, you know, having these, these, teaching experiences as a child, you know, these, these worlds that you're kind of creating. And, um, and now you're, you're, again, like I said, now you're a marketing professor. How did you get from there to here? Yeah, great question. You know what? I fell in love with marketing right in university. I started to do it as a job. Um, got my first job uh, doing like inside sales, inside marketing for a tech company. And then from there just built. Um, and I, and you know, this is what I always say. And I say this to my students now, you know, marketing is such a big, broad topic and you really have to find what you are passionate about. And I was doing, I was organizing large user conferences. I started to get into strategy and campaigns. Um, and doing, working with a lot of creatives, you know, in terms of creating my own creative team, you know, we'd have graphic designers, we'd have website designers, and we would put on these exceptional shows. Um, and I started to really find my niche, um, sort of in terms of what that looked like. And I just worked my way up um, into and was the head of marketing for a tech company. You know, I drove the brand, I was responsible for getting a, a lot of leads into the company. And I was in, a part of really executing on that customer experience for our customers. Yeah. And I loved all of that. 
I loved it so much. And so I started to do that. But on the side, my heart was pulling towards teaching because I got the opportunity to, and what I loved about being the head of marketing is I got to foster a team mm -hmm, culture, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And branding. And this is the thing. Marketing is culture. People like to think that marketing is only external things like building a funnel, having a website, but really great marketing is from the inside out. And it's the same, whether you have a team that you're managing or you are just, you know, your own solopreneur self, that marketing is part of your brand. It is who you are. And I always say you have to start on the inside to then execute that on the outside. And so I was mentoring all these people and then I got the opportunity to teach and it just, it just lit me on fire. Like I loved, I loved, um, teaching the, the, the passion I had for marketing to everybody else. And that really came through that enthusiasm because really who wants to be taught by somebody who doesn't love what they do. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Cause that's how the, the passion starts getting ignited in yourself too. And you brought up actually a really good point and how there are different types of marketing too, because mm -hmm. um, a lot of the marketing that I was involved with was, you know, retail, um, it was prints, it was store design, it was things like that. But I mean, we're talking, and you had mentioned, you know, you, you, there's writers and there's web designers and there's yeah. people that, you know, yeah. just read the analytics. So there's many different layers of it. And I think even in there, just figuring out what you're best at. And in, in some cases, um, one of the things that I was best at was building a team to get to the idea, to get to the completed idea out of my head in, into something else. It's like, you know, I can't work a camera, for example, but I know a great yeah. photographer or I know a great filmmaker. And this is my yeah. idea. And I, I need you to kind of listen to me and figure out how to get that done. So as entrepreneurs, that sometimes that might be the only way that we can plug into it, but the idea is still yours and the message is still yours. And it's just finding the right people to find perhaps made the right words or the finding the right imaging to kind of capture that too. So, um, yeah. So even for the people that, like I said, throw up their hands and just say, I'm not creative. I mean, you know what you want to say, you know? Oh, so. yeah. And this is the thing. Uh, you're right. Like, it's really about that process of trusting yourself, right? And I always think, like, you know, what is creativity? Like, how do you define creativity? Mm -hmm. And I think there is this idea of thinking that creativity has to be like, you have to create the masterpiece. Yeah. You know? But that's not true. Creativity is just the really the generation of new ideas. It's the generation of pushing something a little bit yes. forward, right? And that's the whole premise that I love bringing to the work that I do. When I was in industry, I worked for a lot of tech companies and agile marketing was a real big thing, right? Because uh, I worked with a lot of products uh, and they did a lot of design thinking. And design thinking is um, a form of how I still stay creative right now. Um, a mindset and a process in terms of innovation and um, creating new ideas because that's really all that marketing, like that's all that we're doing in business, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is that we're, we're innovating. We're making a tweak to something, just a little one, maybe even just a little <laughs> bit. And that's what's starting to create something new, right? Yeah. And it can just be, but that idea of like rebirth and like revitalization and, and reinvention is so important. And so I think that creativity does not mean it has to be brand spanking new, this masterpiece. Right. It's just taking a step forward. So I always just, I really challenge everyone to always just think about really defining creativity on your terms, because the truth is, like you said, you're probably already creative in many ways. Yes. And one of the things I always like to lead when I talk with entrepreneurs, I like to lead with the question of, you know, what makes your business special? You know, I, there are so many people doing so many things and so many of the same things, but you know, what is it that makes your uh -huh. business really special? Because then they have to start thinking about, well, what do I do differently? And then that helps them kind of yeah. kickstart how they're going to start talking about their business. It's like, yes, you could go here, but you want to come here because of what I'm going to offer. That's just a little bit more special. And they, then they can kind of build on it, you know? Um, yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's all in us. <laughs> We've all done this in some way. You know, I, I, maybe I, you can compare it to like even, you know, when, you know, kids would um, get those little Hot Wheels cars and they would build ramps and they would build things. And some, you know, if the car didn't make the jump, people would sit and figure out how to figure, well, how are we going to make the jump now? You know, Absolutely. Um, that's yeah. really all it is. <laughs> yeah, that's we don't need to all that it is. It's just figuring out how am I going to make this work? How am I going to get to that final destination with just this little tiny idea? 
You know what? I love what you just said because it made me think of something. And you're right. I, we all have that innate ability to be creative, but what stops us is our brain. Yeah. And sometimes society. You know, and I, I blame society a little it's bit on that. Society, right? It's like, we think, yeah, it's, it's like, like these learned behaviors. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to grow up now right? and be serious about getting a, a, a job where yes. you're going to work hard mm -hmm. and um, work yourself to death. <laughs> Yeah. And you don't yeah. have any opportunity to be creative whatsoever. You know, you just need to, you know, make a living and get a paycheck. Um, so yeah, this yeah. Is and then the, and that sort bigger. of holds us back a little bit because of yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying we just we just have to think bigger. You know, it's not just that. There's so much more to it because then people, you know, start doing things um, to escape that behavior. You know, when they you hear all about meditating and you know you know, coloring books and binge watching and things. It's everybody trying to escape that worker mode and get into something fun. But yeah, if you can incorporate it all, yeah. you can actually have fun all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, yeah. you know, and, and it's just that fear and that doubt that's holding us back and that level of perfectionism. And I don't know about you, but I see that so Jesus. much with my own clients. It's, um, you know, they're like, oh, but I kind of can't do the marketing thing because it has to be perfect before I ship it. Yes. Right. Yep. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Like that mindset is actually going to keep you stuck where you mm -hmm. are, or it's not going to have you producing at all. So what if, what if your goal as like a solopreneur, as someone who is, you know, bringing stuff, it's just producing B minus work, right? Putting it out there, testing it, iterating mm -hmm. what worked, what didn't work, doing it over again, putting it back out again. Mm -hmm. Like that truly is the essence of marketing. No one gets it right the first time. Yes. I can think about huge campaigns that my team and I used to, you know, brainstorm, come up against, you know, it's like a two month, three month creative process. We have a launch date. We get everything yes. rolling. We send it out the week. We're like, we're like, this is gold, gold. And we're not hitting our targets. We're like, what is happening? What is going on? Like we did so much research. We did everything. What's happening. And then you look at the data and you have to do that. You have to see what is working, what is not working. You have to iterate in the moment. You put it back out there. And those tweaks are usually what get you to gold. Yeah. It, it's never gold at the beginning. And I think we forget that about the, about the creative process. Like that's what being creative is. Exactly. Exactly. And I, you, you'd absolutely hit the nail on the head, especially to all the entrepreneurs out there that, you know, even the big companies hit and, and hit yeah. times and they completely miss others, you know, but it is about seeing what resonates with people. So it is worth that evolution. Again, that curiosity to say, okay, they didn't like that, but maybe they'll like this, or how can I make this a little bit differently? And it, it is a constant, yeah. um, you know, process you know don't think i've nailed it and it's done and this is my thing forever think about some of the, all the companies and how they reinvented themselves so many times because you know times change the shoppers change all that sort of stuff yeah. so yeah just just embrace it it's it's not super scary <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. And when you do do that, you brace that element of failure a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah. And we don't even have to call it failure because I really don't believe it is failure. But that idea of like, it's not 100%, but you're just tweaking as you go to get to work your way up, then I think you allow yourself some freedom in that process Absolutely. to show up and, and try new things out and just do things a little bit differently and get out of your comfort zone. I think that's a huge element. To Absolutely. It. All right. So I have to ask you, are you doing anything now that um, is not necessarily your job that you do to still, you know, stimulate that creativity to still be curious? Yeah, I do. I do. You know what I do? I am a mom. I am a business owner. I am a tenured professor. Like I have all these, these awesome buckets and I love doing all of them. And the thing that I do the most for myself, um, in terms of being creative is I love to, um, still, you know, draw color right on the side. And I don't know if this is, you know, I think my definition of creativity has really shifted as well. And sometimes I find to hone in on my own creative process, I need to have quiet. And so going out for walks, nature walks mm -hmm. is like, and going into nature has been a huge part of my own That's creative my process. Now, <laughs> if you had asked me that question when I was in my teens, I would have said, oh, it has to be about like designing art, yeah. you, right? Like for me, or like a, an expression of art, right? But now as, where I am in my journey and where I am in my life, I feel like to connect with my own creative 
process, part of that has to come from refueling myself. And so actually nature is becoming a huge part of what I do to stay creative, to generate ideas, to give myself time to think, because the more I realize about creativity, the more it is about is really the process of my thought process. So when I'm overwhelmed and I'm feeling just like there's so much happening, I lose my creativity because I'm not creating space for it. Yeah. So I actually have to create more space in my life to be creative. And yeah, and that's exactly it. Because sometimes I have to do that, you know, walk the dog with no music, not, you know, just be in yeah. nature um, to kind of start with a fresh palette in a way without any distraction whatsoever. And then just breathe, listen to the wind, the birds, you know, that sort of thing. And just, like I said, just make it as, um, as, as much of an empty space as possible in order to then start letting the ideas come in. Because if you start, you know, adding the distraction of music, which some people, you know, that will trigger some creativity and, and it has for me too. Yeah. But sometimes it is, is just really that fresh start. The other thing that you mentioned too about being a mom, that if people are having issues, you know, trying to figure out how do I get back and be creative, ask your kids what they're doing, you know? So what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Coloring? All right. Well, I'm going to color too. You know, are you playing? Games? Exactly. You know what? I'm going to do that too. Or yeah. you know, if it's, you know, coloring Easter eggs, if it's, you know, it's just like these really simple kid things that we did, mm -hmm. just join in for a little bit and recapture that. And it's like, oh yes, this is how I did it. <laughs> I love that you give that example. I my, my kids are getting a little bit older, but when they were little, I was like, I love crafts. So mm -hmm. I was like, let's, yeah, do, we'll a craft. lots of let's craft. do a craft. Let's do a craft. I loved it more than the kids, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, my daughter went through that phase too. And now she's a teen and you know, the, the yep. things are changing a little bit, but you know, every once in a while it's like, let's, all right, let's just do this. Because even at this age, this yeah. was fun, you know? Um, and it's sometimes it's like just the, the choice of movies or the, you know, that they're not, super complicated or might be kind of silly and simple, but um, yeah, it, it's just kind of recapturing that feeling and that thinking process of when, you know, before things got really complicated, I guess. Yeah. Well, thank so you good. so much for talking to me today. I really, really appreciated it. And I, I really think, you know, if people are having, you know, still struggling with this sort of thing, you know, we kind of gave some tips here, but, you know, loosely in our conversation. But if they want to get in touch with you, I will have the information um, in the comments. So they will be able to find you both on LinkedIn. And do you have a website that they can reach? Yes, I do. It's simonmoreau.com. Perfect. Oh, nice and simple. So I will add that as nice well. And simple. Um, like I said, in, in case people need a little more help in jumpstarting this, but I, I think, you know, if anything, your business is going to benefit just by doing this, but I think your life overall will get better too. If you can just kind of have a little more play and innovation and curiosity back in your life too. So thank you again so much. And um, I really- uh, Thank you. So fun. All right.